Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at this board I bought off AliExpress. It is a board for controlling RGB LED matrixes that seems to be a little bit inspired by a board that I sell that does the same thing. So I thought who would be better to give this an honest, impartial review than me. This is my collection of boards for controlling LED matrix displays using Arduinos. So we have an ESP8266 version, a Tiny Pico version, a Huzza32, and then one of these dev kit boards that looks kind of like a D1 Mini but isn't. So those three are ESP32 boards. My most popular one is actually the D1 Mini version, so this is based on an ESP8266. And what's nice about these boards is it makes using these displays really easy. Here's a typical display. You just put the board into the connector that the arrow is moving away from. And then using the ribbon cable that comes with the board, you plug that into the output of my board. And then you screw it into the screw terminals. And that's it done fully connected up and ready to use. But uh, the creator of the library they use, so PX Matrix, they all use it, is a guy called Dom, or 2Dom, Dominic Buchstaller. He sent me a link there recently, and I thought it was quite interesting, because in my opinion, it was something that was at least somewhat inspired by this board. But rather than getting bothered by it or getting bogged down, I thought it'd be interesting to buy it and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so this is the board, the AZSMZ ESP matrix panel board. Basically, it works the same as my board. It has the P-in connector that pushes into the display. Then it has the P-out connector that you would connect the ribbon cable to and you would connect the power of the display to this port, I guess. It looks like you can program it using USB. We'll have to test that out. The ESP8266 is a module rather than on my board. It's actually a D1 Mini that you use. That's pretty much everything. So I claim that I thought it was inspired by my board. A few things that made me think that was one, the dip switch on the front that was to do with controlling the optional pins because there was an issue if you didn't have a way of disconnecting the e-pin for some displays i made a full video about that up here the other thing that i thought was kind of unique to mine was using the p-out cable or that comes with the displays but uh, maybe that was used on another design as well i'm not sure and the last thing was a jumper pin for controlling the power. But on closer inspection of this board, it isn't the same as mine at all. Mine was to do with having a diode so you couldn't power the display using your micro USB cable if you didn't want to. But it would still be able to connect back. Like if you connected a barrel jack in that was powering the display, this could power the D1 Mini. But theirs is just literally an on and off switch, so it's it's not the same. At this point, you're probably wondering how I'm so sure that the board has some inspiration from my board. The things I just pointed out could have just been a coincidence. You know, the boards don't really look anything alike, so, you know, they could have just happened on the same solutions for the same problems. But uh, let me show you something. So this is my listing on Tindy for my... Uh, my matrix board and we'll take a look at their listing we'll swap between them now in a minute yeah so what we have here is uh, at least two of my images that is my desk that is the thumbnail of one of my uh, streams that I did uh, last year uh, that isn't my image that is a viewer of my channel called Leo's image and it is taken from my Tindy listing as well. This is also my image for sure, the Tetris clock one, the Wi-Fi Tetris clock. May as well link to a video there of that. The Mario one is my image in terms of, it's my sketch. I don't think that's my image though. I'm 
not sure whose image this is, but this is Harry Har from Harry's Fun sketch. So yeah, it's definitely at the very least borrowing from me in terms of these images. Well, taking these two, I'm not sure about the other ones, but whatever, that's all fine. But uh, where the real interesting thing comes is the product description. Right, I'm going to read this product description for you. The RGB LED matrix panels are one of the coolest displays you can use with an Arduino, but there is quite a bit of wiring to connect them up and also they are a little awkward to power. This board makes wiring them really simple. The board just slots directly into the input pin. Seems to be a little bit cut off there, but anyways, it also links to um, a lot of my GitHub pages, which is all fine. So that's probably where they got some of the images from, whatever. But uh, so remember that little bit of text there. Now let's go look at my little bit of text. OK, why did I make this? The RGB LED matrix panels are one of the coolest displays you can use with an Arduino, but there's quite a bit of wiring to connect them up and also they're a little bit awkward to power. So that was the weirdest thing about this whole situation, was just looking at an AliExpress listing that was nothing to do with me that had my exact words in it. So nearly their entire listing is copy and pasted from sections of it so it's not it's not lifted word for word they have kind of mixed them around a little bit so that's the first line and then uh, the board slots directly into the header pin it uh, removes the ribbon cables part and then if we look at this last part here this board for easily controlling uh, blah, blah 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 this shield is for so they changed it a little bit <laughs> it's like mostly my exact words so that's why i can say with 100 percent confidence that they were at least very aware that my board existed because they lifted the description directly from my tindy store the next thing that i want to talk about is something that actually quite surprised me so if we take a look at the price of the board so it is assembled compared to mine, which is a kit. It's $20 plus $7.63 postage. So that's $27 in total. While my board, which again, I stress is a kit. So you do have to do a little bit more work yourself is $14 plus $4 postage. So that's $18 you don't have a d1 mini included in it so you can buy a d1 mini for two dollars fifty delivered so it's actually quite significantly cheaper to get my board which really surprised me so again i have to stress their board comes assembled and mine does not but there's still a significant price difference between them and i would have thought anything that was copied and was produced directly from China would be cheaper, but yeah, I don't know what happened there. One thing that I have noticed that I think is a little bit strange is the power traces seem to be quite small. So as I mentioned, you can use up, these displays can use up to six amps and the trace that the power is connected to is just the same size as the data ones. So like if you look at the equivalent trace I have, which possibly is overkill, you know, it is way, way bigger. Um, I, I've always been quite surprised how big of a trace you need for, you know, some amount of amps or whatever. And it's obviously better to err on the side of caution rather than not having enough space for it. So, yeah, that's one thing I'm noticing off the bat that I think is kind of weird. There's this unpopulated thing here too. I'm not sure if that is an LDR or if it's for a cap. Like I was going to use the fact that it would be a large trace to decide if it's a cap, but uh, I, I don't think it is. It probably is maybe an LDR. And I guess this is a broken out header for something. I, I'm not sure what, because I don't think there's any pins free 
on the ESP8266 if it uses all the matrix pins. I think only A0 is, so yeah, really not sure what that was. But uh, yeah, so maybe let's turn this on and see how we get on. So it should be pretty straightforward to connect up, same as my one. So one problem that I have now is because it uses this type of screw terminal, which is just a regular five millimeter one, is it? I can't remember the names of them. The connection that comes on the power cable that comes with the displays isn't made for that type of connection. So yeah, that's a bit of a pain. And I guess you'd have to do some fiddling to get it to fit in. Like I know what Adafruit did in their learn guide was they like slotted it in like this and left a spare, uh, you know, left a pad over the other side. But you can't do that with this one because the ribbon cable is in the way. So I would definitely ding it marks for this. I'm actually not sure how to solve this problem. <laughs> um, like I guess I could maybe cut the wire and plug it in then uh, the ground would be okay for the same reason I was talking about with the Adafruit learn guide we can just put it in that way so I think I'm actually going to do something stupid and use one of my boards as an adapter board so this 5 volts is connected to that 5 volts so I can plug it into this one and then connect a wire from here to that one I don't know if that's a good idea but it's Whatever, it'll work fine. Maybe people have a better suggestion, but yeah, I'm just gonna use this. Okay, I have it wired up, I hope. So I have it connected using a tiny Pico board. So yeah, this is just connected to the screen's power cable and then I've cables going from there to there. For input power, I included a barrel jack on mine and also the these ones can be used as input or output. but They just have the screw terminals as input or output. I guess that would be fine if you have a bench power supply or some other way of powering it, but I guess I'm just used to using the barrel jack method, but I won't hold that one against them. That's just what I've been using to power these, but I guess it's up to what you have around for powering them. Yeah, let's give it a go. So I haven't programmed it with anything, so we'll see what happens. For some reason, I'm nervous about it. Let's see what happens. Okay, I see some lights on the ESP were shining down there. Nothing on the display. Uh, you just have to take my word for that, seeing as it would be a bit awkward to flip it around. But uh, okay, so let's, let's program it with something. I'm not the biggest fan of these type of uh, uh, connectors. Is it a type A? But it doesn't really matter. But uh, okay. Okay, something seems to be powering now because it seems to be humming a little bit more. Not enough to be picked up on the microphone for sure. Okay, so this was a sketch I was actually working on during the MakerCast uh, last night. So the first thing we want to check is does it have a port? And it seems like it does, so COM port 4. And uh, yeah, I want you to try guess what this is, or what's displaying on the screen if it displays. So let's click upload and find out. Okay, so we do actually have something on the display here. So yeah, it's working fine. No problems with how it works anyways. It's using the standard PX matrix pinout, so I didn't actually need to change anything between my board and it. So yeah, works fine. I really don't have a sensitive enough microphone to pick up this, but that noise I was talking about definitely goes away when I plug out the USB, so I don't know what's happening there. But it's like a squealing cap or something, and it goes away when the USB is not plugged in. So I'm not sure what's causing that to make that noise, but yeah. The data is still there, which means it is the ESP is being powered by this as well, so I really don't know why plugging in USB power would cause an extra noise or whatever, but yeah. Uh, another thing that I need to mention is it has auto reset functionality built into it too, so there is a flash and a reset button, but it's not needed. So it works fine. My two complaints or questions about it would be 
the trace between the two of these, I would have expected them to be much bigger. Like if you made this all white and it was taking 6 amps, that would be a bad thing. So I wouldn't recommend it based on that. And then also the fact that you can't plug in the cables that come with the display into it. I think that's a really big oversight. Like even if they moved this blue terminal a little bit more to here, we could do the thing we were talking about with the Adafruit, uh, how Adafruit say in their learn guide. Uh, but yeah, we can't. So I, I actually couldn't see a way of connecting to the positive voltage. Definitely no recommendation for that part of it anyways, but functionally it works fine. So do I recommend it? And the answer is probably unsurprisingly no, but not for anything to do with me. I definitely have a big concern about that power trace. I don't think that's right. It should be much bigger than that for sure. Do I have a problem with anything they did? So from a board point of view, absolutely not. They did not even copy me, and even if they did, that would be perfectly fine. They saw a problem, and they created a solution for it, and that's absolutely fine. I didn't have the first board designed to control these matrix displays either, so, you know, definitely can't argue with that. Should they be using my images in their listing? No, for sure. Copyrights with the person who took the picture, they never took got my permission for them so they shouldn't but i do actually use people's images from aliexpress in my youtube videos pretty often so i'm not too worried about it at the same time but they should have gotten permission first the listing i i have no idea about the listing that that was the thing that felt the weirdest to me um but i don't know what the rules are around that and again I guess it's not really that big of a deal, so I'm not sure. Maybe people have suggestions on what is or isn't allowed in that situation, but yeah, I, I don't know. Thanks for watching this video. I'd really like to thank my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel. They pretty much paid for this product for review, so I um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.